Hello everybody, this is Avantik here. Uh, welcome to a brand new series of machine learning. Uh, the first topic that we'll do is black box introduction of machine learning. Let's understand. This is specifically targeted for uh, folks who have no background of machine learning. Okay, this is this is a black box understanding to that. Okay, so th that's all we need. We the objective is from the objective from this course is to become a data scientist and uh, you know and we're proceeding forward to that. This is our topic black box introduction to machine learning what we'll understand is first what is not machine learning what is machine learning few uh, use cases so that we can understand what is about types of machine learning supervised unsupervised reinforced what is machine learning pipeline elements of machine learning pipeline input to machine learning featureization model training prediction evaluation and finally deployment okay this is this is uh, this is the diagram i have taken from uh, from the famous uh, books okay and what is what we are trying to tell here is what is not machine learning this is traditional programming the, the way what we do in these days right i mean uh, the, the previous era what we do here is you have you have to implement a firewall which should prevent some attacks happening to your uh, private network so you'll encode a rule over there so that if packet is coming it will match with the rule if there's a match the packet drop happens okay so that that was the thing if based on a requirement used to based on a new data format or based on the requirement used to add new code over that was rule based approach whenever you these were expert systems and the expert system is something which is uh, you know trained or sorry expert system is something which is actually which contains the code to handle all the situations okay so this was uh, your previous era systems where you have a high end system with a lot of complex code written in it and for a new situation you have to add some new logic over here okay this was the thing so you you basically write rules all the time Okay, write logic all the time. So that's the first, the most important thing. You used to write logic in uh, non-machine learning code. What changed machine learning is you you created a software which can learn from the data. Okay, you don't have to you know add new logic every now and then. Uh, based on the data that it is getting, it will learn the logic by itself. Okay, you can see here the data is provided to machine learning algorithm. It read, it returns a logic. Okay, yeah. and we'll use this logic to do, uh, you know, prediction uh, later on. So coming back to the previous example where we used firewall uh, and to write, I mean, where we actually wrote code in the firewall, okay, so that it handles a type of traffic. Now what is happening over here is uh, you don't write code to anymore. You will train with a new type of traffic and telling that this is an attack. That's all. It will build the logic by itself. Okay, that is what is machine learning. A few before going into further details and let's see a few examples you know uh, for example the mail okay uh, automatically you get a mail and it identifies whether this is spam or a ham ham means it's not a spam mail actually okay so this is done using supervised machine learning which you'll understand later this is one machine learning application that you've seen in your daily life uh, second is you know uh, you have the different devices like lifts installed in different parts of the world of your organization it wants it it don't it wants to give an improved customer experience it don't it will it want to tell to the customers that this lift will never ever fail but of course it's a machine it can fail all they can do is do a predictive analysis you know this lift might fail at this period of time and doing a proactive replacement of the parts of the lift whatever is it right that's what it is okay this is also one type then you know uh, like insurance companies if insurance con companies want to improve its customer satisfaction level uh, what would it do is it would actually when in a grieving situation like this is of course not something that will happen okay but in a grieving situation like you know somebody uh, met an accident or so uh, they don't want to take all the details there and then do uh, analysis how much should be the insurance amount then they give the money after one month that's that's not something you know that's that is the last thing that the victim wants right you really want to improve the customer experience what you do based on you know whatever information you have you just use your machine learning to predict how much how much is the amount that the uh, that the client may get you give it uh, you know prior I mean, and later on what when your when your uh, you know insurance team calculates the money whatever the differential money is they can settle it up okay but what is improved over here is uh, the customer experience okay predicting insurance medical is one uh, another area okay and you can see you know uh, of course there recently there was a competition uh, that was held in china based on you know machine based uh, uh, diagnosis versus human based diagnosis machine based diagnosis was found to be 83 percent 
accurate whereas human waste was 66% so it's still we are we, it's gaining a lot of momentum and uh, you know traction so yes uh, you medicine i mean you can scale you have limited doctors you have limited capabilities but using machine learning you can scale it up right uh, and the thing is market segmentation suppose you are launching a new product you would like to know how you will market uh, what are the possible options you have so market segmentation is an important aspect so this is what is uh, you basically find similar customer and put them in one, one bracket and you know give them the same type of ad suppose you have rich customers you would want to sell them high end products right you don't want to sell them low end products similarly you know this is what market segmentation does it helps you strategizing your business uh, then you have uh, this is this is a uh, robot based football okay so robots are playing football but how does it identify okay I, i'm hitting this way and this missed the ball by this much and this missed the goalkeeper by this much so i should be hitting this way that learning this is this is the ai based learning there right this is known as reinforced payment learning okay and we'll discuss about it later but this is one such application you can the ai is full of such applications where it is learning from environment we'll get there there later on okay so broadly uh, you know those are some examples to explain where we could see i'll, I'll connect all these examples now so broadly, what we see is uh, machine learning is divided into three categories. One is supervised, one is unsupervised, one is reinforced. Supervised means it is uh, you know uh, task driven. When you are training, when when you are giving examples to the uh, examples to machine learning algorithm to create a logic for you, right? You are giving examples. Uh, when you are giving a cat's photo and telling this is a cat, giving a dog's photo and telling this is a dog, okay then it is supervised because you are telling the target information as a well as cat and dog here as a target so you're, it's in the supervision you're telling what are the right what are the wrong things right based on that machine learning is doing future right or wrong that is your supervised machine learning unsupervised means it's data driven there is no uh, no task here all you give is to data it's up to the algorithm to best categorize or class you know cluster the data it's, it's clustering the data, similar data it will put on one side. This is one type of unsupervised algorithm, but here you don't have any target information. Okay, we'll come to there later. Then you have reinforcement. Reinforcement means environment driven. So basically, you can say this is task driven, this is data driven, this is environment driven. Environment driven means, means you know, it, it gets a reward from the system if it is doing the right thing. Okay, like if it's if a robot is trying to hit ball in the goal and it is missing the goal by x distance, it gets a reward. Okay. Uh, this is this is what you have missed and this is this is if next time it hits closer it, it reward improves so what it tries to do is with you know with act actions it earns rewards and based on the reward it tries to find the actions okay let's understand a little bit more about supervised machine learning okay so explicit learning happens data contains input and output when you are training the example, you will give shows cat, cat photo and tell you this is a cat. This is the input. This uh, I am mean, sorry. This is the training. Training means you are giving the data. You are giving the uh, target. Okay, input and output. Based on that, it tries to find the relationship between the input and output. And for unseen output data, it will try to predict the output. Got it right? Output can be continuous. Okay. So, like take an example of uh, predicting price of the house. Where you will have uh, the input data as square footage, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, uh, location, okay, and the target will be price of the house. This price of the house is a continuous value. It can be thousand, it can be thousand and two, it can be ten thousand, it can be anything, right? So it is uh, continuous. When the target is continuous in nature, then you call it regression, okay. When the target is discrete in nature, for example, the cat uh, photo and telling it it is a cat, it's a classification. Learning algorithm tries to find pattern between input and output during training phase and it uses this pattern for doing the future prediction. That's what it happens. Unsupervised is, uh, as we are discussing, and the example for supervised, the examples that we saw was insurance amount based on the previous you know, patient details and the amount that was reimbursed. We would train the model and uh, later on for just patient details, you can predict the insurance amount, right? Uh, similarly, uh, what we saw given a mail earlier, you provided a lot of mails and told that it, this is a spam, this is not spam. That's what we do, right? When you mark email as spam, you're training the model actually. Okay, so uh, on doing this, what happens is 
you are basically uh, training the model. Okay, that comes as a model supervised. Unsupervised, no output associated. There is only the data. It tries to find the relationship between the data. Okay. No correct answer. Your, your output is not provided. There is nothing like output in this concept. Grouping of data. That is, uh, it, I mean, this is one of the things that happens in unsupervised. Given all the data, it will try to find the best clusters of the data. Then you have uh, learning association rules. Like, you know, uh, one example is when you go to uh, the supermarket, right? One product is kept next to each other. There is a lot of analysis that happens before it happens. It is placed that way. Uh, you might have heard about this story here in diversion. Okay, if not, people who went to actually uh, buy a diaper end up buying beer. That was the analysis. Okay, how it happened was this is the 1998 Walmart story. Uh, when uh, it, this this was the on to an analysis of the bills, right? This is what you realized. People are buying beer and diaper together. So on doing the reverse analysis, it was found that you know it is generally father's responsibility to buy the buy beer. Uh, sorry, so it is father's responsibility to buy a diaper. And when uh, he is generally in his early thirties, so when coming back from office in Friday evenings, okay, when he's buying his diaper and already tired with his office work plus a kid, new kid at home, so he has all the tendency to pick up beer. Okay, so after that, you know, you'll see in Walmart, beer is kept close to uh, diaper. Okay, and that, that's one of the oldest uh, theory around it. Okay, so this is rule, association rule. Now, this is also a found out using unsupervised machine learning. Then, uh, reinforced machine learning, it's like, you know, you like the best way to understand is using that uh, player and the goal since we just now finished with FIFA. So, just imagine a robot is trying to hit the ball to the goal and there's a player obstruction uh, or the goalkeeper gets the ball okay then he he realizes oh, the reward is less he has to improve the reward he tries some other thing and he sees better uh, reward okay so environment gives him the reward based on the action that's the whole philosophy okay the entire uh, machine learning uh, product you have this pipeline that you see here first is you have to understand the business what you're trying to do okay and a lot of time companies have spent over here what they want to do uh, then you have uh, data wrangling okay so once you understand the business, what you are trying to achieve, you basically need to get the data, okay, and process the data. So this is that part. So data wrangling uh, includes uh, your your data ingestion, data processing, cleaning, okay. After that, you get into visualization. If on doing visualization, you realize you are not achieving your business uh, properly, you revisit the entire thing, and that's why you can see a battle over here. Then assuming you know things are fine so far, you still think you are in line with uh, your business understanding. You proceed further with data pre-processing, so that the machine learning algorithms can work on it. Okay, data needs to be pre-processed because there are certain expectations of machine learning algorithm. Okay, your your data has to match to that, and that is what is done by your data pre-processing. Then uh, once the data is ready after being pre-processed, okay, you get into model training. So the same data is now ingested to you know, learning algorithm so that it creates a train model. Okay, learning algorithm means that is what we'll study next next part of course. But you know, there are certain algorithms. This is the phase where you would give the data which is ready to be consumed by machine learning algorithms. Here at this point, you will give that state get data and it will train it. On training it, you know, you realize that you know uh, there is some problem about it. You go back and do some pre-processing. You proceed further model validation. You see something not working right. You go back and do data pre-processing. Okay, then uh, you get into uh, okay. And once the model validation is done, model validation is you know you try out a lot of strategies are there for validating a model, and also there are a lot of possibilities of model over here. Okay, so you basically uh, have to find out uh, the best uh, model and all the possibilities. Okay, that is what you do in model validation. If you're not satisfied, you might go in data pre-processing. Okay, um, and also you might go in changing the business strategy or you know revisiting the business strategy also. Okay, so this is one of the major step, and we'll spend some time over here. Uh, all the other stages will be spending some time to understand what is happening, and finally, once you have a perfectly trained model, of course, uh, training a good model needs a lot of experimentation, a lot of fine tuning. You might need a lot of uh, Computation resources, and once that is ready, you go for deployment. Deployment means you are, you know, putting the trained model in marketplace so that 
the consumers can actually access it, okay, make use of it. So that is the deployment part. It can sit behind RESTful interface. I'll explain that as well. Okay. So generally, uh, all your machine learning algorithms, you have to do some real task, right? And so if it is real task, we need some real data. Real data are these text, image, CSV, audio, video, time series, and absolutely anything. Okay. And what your machine learning can consume is nothing more than vectors, fixed length array of vectors. Okay. So this is the actual data. This is what machine learning can understand. So naturally, you have to convert this format of data to this format of data and that is known as feature extraction. So, so it, this basically converts any CSV to vector, audio to vector, video to vector, time series to vector, right? This is the feature extraction part. We'll, we'll, in the next videos, we'll discuss details about it. Okay. Then comes the learning algorithm, right? This is the model training part, then this is the learning algorithm. What happens over here? You're passing the data. You can see this is housing data set square footage, floor, total, so all this information is also price is also there. You are not training the algorithm. You can imagine this part, right? You can imagine this part as your uh, as your input, okay? okay. You, you can imagine this part as input, this part as output. So when you, this is the learning algorithm, you are passing this data to the learning algorithm and what it returns is a train model or a prediction function. That is, that is the thing that happens in a learning algorithm. Okay. Once the model is trained, this is the one that is trained now, right? Using the historical data. This is the new data. Okay. Just assume this is the new data. You pass the new data here, it will predict the price for it. That's all. Okay. So next part is, you know, validating the model. So the thing is why this is important because there are different uh, learning algorithm, right? You can see a learning algorithm. It's like there are a lot of varieties of it, a lot of variations of it. Okay, so you have to find the best one among them. So you need, you know, model, model validation. You train uh, all those competing ones and then see which one is giving you better results. Okay, uh, and also in if considering one algorithm, also there is there is something. How do you configure that learning learning algorithm? Those are known as hyperparameters. Okay, you need to find the best combination of that. That also needs a lot of experimentation. Okay. So, so, and also upon doing all this, you realize the results are not satisfactory. You might have to go back in the chain and fix few things over there, you know, alter a few things over there. Okay. Uh, that's, that's the validation. But once you're satisfied with the validation, you actually want, want to put the train model in the marketplace uh, behind a web server, right? Or, or, you know, you want to ship to your consumer customer, right? So you, what, how can you, how can somebody consume it? You actually put your train model over here. Okay, of course you can uh, you can rely on the customer to train it further and all that. I'll talk about those things later on. But as a simple stick model, you have you can have a restful interface to this model, and consumers can actually access it. That's the story of deployment. Okay, I believe with this uh, discussion, you got a fair sense around you know what is machine learning and what are the major major elements that we will be focusing on. Okay, see you in the next video. Thank you guys.